Despite millions of fans being thirsty for it, I do not believe that the Spawn movie franchise will be rebooted because the creator of Spawn, Todd McFarlane, is the sole owner and he's too busy sabotaging himself and getting in his own way. Let's talk about that subject. Welcome back to Comic Power. I'm your host, Comic Killer 72 And welcome to another Comic Power special report. This is a program where I talk about one specific subject in extensive detail. Today we're going to talk about the contradiction of Todd McFarlane, how he can be so brilliant and so stupid at the same time. All right, let's get right into it. Now let's talk about how we got here. Todd McFarlane is a Canadian comic book artist and got his big break for drawing Amazing Spider-Man. Taking over as the primary artist of the comic starting in issue 298, which is the first cameo of Venom and he's credited as a co-creator of Venom because he's the first artist to draw him. There's another teaser of Venom in 299 and then his first full appearance in issue number 300 and you know what that is worth. This is the time where young Todd becomes a superstar in the land of comics. Fans love the way that he contorts Spider-Man's body and the way he draws his web. So in 1992, a big controversy happens. Seth Seven of Marvel's biggest name artists leave the company to start their own comic book company called Image Comics and Todd McFarlane is one of them. It's based on the premise of creator rights because if you create a character for Marvel or DC, they actually own that character. They could fire you and keep publishing it anyway. But Image is founded on the mantra that the creators would own their own work. In terms of the intellectual property, Image would just work as a distributor. They would not own it. The actual creators would. Of course, Image became a big success. It's celebrating its 30th anniversary this year and I will talk about that later in their video. All seven of the founders released their own books, some of them multiple books. The biggest stars of the seven are Rob Layfield, who put out Young Blood, Jim Lee, who put out Wildcats, and of course Todd McFarlane, who put out Spawn. It sold an astronomical 1.75 million copies. We live in a world now where if you sell 100,000 copies, that's considered a lot now. So that is just wow. And Spawn number one gives us the first appearance of Al Simmons, the protagonist of the story. In this action horror story, Al Simmons is an African-American lieutenant colonel in the military who was killed during a blackout mission. And since he killed innocents as part of his job, he's going straight to hell. But he misses his wife so badly and he wants to return to Earth more than anything. So he cuts a deal with a demon. And he does return to Earth but it's five years later, his wife has remarried. Her husband is a former friend of his and they have a kid together, which he couldn't have with his wife when they were together. And of course, he looks like a monstrous hell spawn with the chains and the cape and everything. It's just bad. Of course, the demon sends the clown, AKA the violator, to keep up with what he's doing on her. After some brooding, Al decides to take on organized crime and child killers and doles out vigilante justice. He has to defeat an enhanced mercenary hired by the mafia called Overkill. And he becomes about one inch from being murdered by a spawn killer called Angela from heaven. So Todd is really on a roll in terms of critical acclaim for spawn from 1992 and 1993 and brought in heavy hitters like Alan Moore, Frank Miller, and Neil Gaiman to be guest writers. So the sales for spawn are incredible. It comes out on time, unlike his peers, and it's got critical acclaim. So of course, Hollywood comes a knocking and Todd and HBO Inc. a deal that turns spawn into an animated series, which runs from 1997 to 1999. And if you haven't seen it, it is excellent. It is very dark and awesome. And it becomes a critically acclaimed hit. The master of voice work, Keith David, does the voice and it holds up very well over time. And that's not all. We got the Spawn live action movie in 1997 starring Michael J. White. And this is where things went south. So let's face it, the film is just not that good. The star of the movie also agreed that it was not very good and he blamed it on the director, Mark A.Z. DePay, who has a background in visual effects, but Spawn the live action movie was his first film directing. And Michael claims that the movie is not coherent because he says that Mark went into the cutting room floor and tried to play up all the special effects and really hurt the story. And on top of that, it's 1997, so the CGI isn't as good as it is today. So the CGI that he was trying to use isn't that impressive and doesn't hold up that well over time anyway. So you had a first time director who was overemphasizing effects that don't hold up at the expense of the story and the CGI became outdated very quickly. So Michael wasn't happy and I'm sure that Todd McFarlane probably wasn't happy either. So at the time I made this video, we're 25 years removed from the first Spawn movie. This character is more than popular enough to get a reboot so why has it not happened? That's what we're going to talk about today in more detail. So what has Todd been up to all this time? Well, first of all, he has continued to keep writing Spawn. And in 2019, it passed the 300th issue and it set a Guinness Book of World Record for the longest ongoing independent comic series. At the time I made this video, we're up to issue 326 and it's still rolling. So you have enough source material for not just a trilogy, but maybe 10 movies. Todd has also kept busy with his other company, McFarlane Toys. And make no mistake about it, McFarlane makes 
make some excellent toys. The quality and the craftsmanship of them are incredible. Not only is he making toys for the properties that he owns, but he's also making toys for other companies that want to license those rights over to him. So he's cutting into Hasbro's business. So this is pretty big time. So you're probably thinking right now, okay, Comic Power, I understand the background information to give you the pretext of what's going on, but what's going on with the Spawn movie? Where the heck is it? And if Todd McFarlane is the sole owner of the Spawn universe, then why is there no movie? It's not in production. It's just not happening. So why? And my answer is Todd McFarlane is a genius, but at the same time, he is a egotistical narcissist. And the reason that the Spawn franchise has not been rebooted for a live action movie series is because of him. And he showed some very questionable judgment over time. For example, getting to a public feud with Neil Gaiman. As I stated before, he brought in Neil Gaiman to write issue number nine of Spawn, in which Neil co-created Angela of Heaven, who I mentioned earlier. And both of them shared the credit as the creator of this character. Well, at least we thought that's how it went, but Neil Gaiman tried to use the character in something else and Todd McFarlane blocked him, claiming that Neil Gaiman's work was a work for hire and Todd McFarlane is the one who actually owned it. And of course, this is the ultimate hypocrisy because the image founders like Todd McFarlane left Marvel over creator rights that they were creating characters and they did not get a say or a stake in them. So Todd McFarlane left Marvel criticizing Marvel for their practice and then he turns around and acts just like Marvel and unfairly treating creators. So there was a lawsuit involving McFarlane and Gaiman that lasted for over a decade determining who actually owned the character. And finally, after a very long time, the courts actually ruled with Gaiman Gaiman, which looked like a win for creators, but then Gaiman turned around and sold the character to Marvel, which made them both look bad. But let's face it, Todd McFarlane was a jerk and should have never done this to Neil Gaiman in the first place. They should have split 50-50 on that character from the beginning. Another lapse in judgment from Todd McFarlane was when he bought that steroid-infused baseball by Mark McGuire when he broke the single-season home run record from Babe Ruth. And Todd McFarlane paid $3 million for that ball, which everyone knew was fraudulent because the record was fraudulent because everyone knew that Mark McGuire was on steroids when he did it. Dude, Todd, seriously, dude, seriously. Todd also showed horrible judgment by naming a character in his universe, Tony Twist. And this thing was lifted directly from a hockey player whose real name was Tony Twist. Todd did not ask for permission or pay any licensing money to Tony for the use of his name. Tony Twist sued Todd McFarlane Productions and won a judgment of $15 million, forcing Todd McFarlane's company to file for bankruptcy for protection. So that's just three things that Todd did that I even feel like talking about in which his ego and narcissism got in the way of his better judgment. So is Hollywood still interested in making a spy movie? Of course they are. It's a well-known franchise and I ranked him number three on my list of the top 10 African-American heroes of all time. And let's face it, after the Avengers made a billion dollars in 2012, proving that a superhero franchise not named Batman can make one billion dollars at the box office? Trust me, Hollywood was all in on superhero movies. If we're talking about independent superhero franchises, there's no one more popular than Spawn other than Judge Dredd probably. So what has Todd done to sabotage himself to make sure this movie never gets made ever again? There's a lot. But first of all, Todd has insisted on writing his own screenplay for the movie. Now, writing comics and writing screenplays are not the same thing. They're two Two different animals but hey they'll concede and let him write his own screen the studio would hire a director and then the director would interpret it the way that he or she thought it should be so Hollywood was willing to give that concession to Todd no big deal but surely there's dozens of good screenwriters that are better than Todd McFarlane they can do this job but he owns the property so they have to pacify him in some way no problem the scripts gonna go into rewrites anyway report production because you're gonna have things like paid product placement that's gonna go into the script so Todd's gonna write the screenplay he's gonna be a consultant on the movie let's get this thing financed and made right right not so fast and this is what the holdup is Todd McFarlane insist insist on being the director of the Spawn movie franchise has Todd McFarlane ever directed a movie before nope does he know what he's doing nope is anyone in Hollywood stupid enough to give a first-time director a budget of 150 million dollars nope the Spawn franchise is supernatural horror action. You're going to need a ton of CGI for the lead character alone. Have you seen his cape and chains? It's like they are alive. Of course, his plasma blast and other things that he does. Monsters like the Violator. That's a lot of CGI right there as well. That stuff is expensive. All the fighting and stunt coordination that's going to go into this. So yeah, $150 million easily. And first time directors getting that type of budget is never going to happen. Directors have to prove themselves on the indie market first with very, very tiny budgets. Let's take a look at the director, Ryan Coogler 
Wheeler and how he upgraded. His first independent film was in 2013 called Fruitfield Station. He made it for just $900,000 and it had a box office of $17 million. So it made 17 times his budget. That is a great profit. So Hollywood rewards him and gives him a bigger budget with the Creed franchise and they make it for $40 million and it makes $173 million. So it made four times his budget, another great return on investment. So Hollywood upgrades him and rewards him again with Black Panther in 2018. It has a $200 million budget and it makes $1.3 billion at the box office. So it makes six times his budget and Ryan Coogler is now an A-lister. So that is your typical Hollywood trajectory. You start with a very tiny budget and prove yourself as a director and then you can move up to bigger and bigger budgets. And I understand that Todd McFarlane does own the Spawn property, but unless he's going to put up the $150 million to make it, no one else is going to risk that type of money on a first time director. And only an egotistical narcissist believes that they could pull this off. I think that Todd may be jealous of his hero Frank Miller who in 2005 got a chance to see his franchise Sin City develop into a movie and Frank got to direct it as well, but with a few conditions. It was co-directed by Robert Rodriguez who's a real actual Hollywood director and the budget was only $40 million. It went on to make $160 million which is great success but this is nowhere like Todd is asking for Spawn. The budget was only $40 million not $150 and Robert Rodriguez can watch Frank Miller's back for the things that Frank wanted, but he doesn't know how it works in Hollywood. So once again, if you look at it in comparison, to give a first time director $150 million is completely insane. So year after year after year after year keeps passing and people keep wondering where's the Spawn film. You have the demand, you have the CGI to make it look right. Superhero movies are selling big, big tickets. Even C-list heroes like Captain Marvel made $1 billion at the box office. It's completely ridiculous. Nothing against her, but Captain Marvel is not Spawn. So in 2015, Todd McFarlane announces to the world that there will be a new Spawn movie franchise coming. And the fans are like, yeah! so when is it? And then in 2016, he announces that he has completed the script to Spawn and that he will be directing the movie. And the fans are like, so when is it? So in 2017, it's announced that he has inked a deal with Bloomhouse Studios. This is a movie studio that was founded in 2000 and they specialized in horror films and had big hits such as Paranormal Activity, The Purge, and Get Out. So once again, fans are like, so when is it coming out and who's starring in it? So at the 2018 Comic-Con, it's formally announced that Jamie Foxx will be playing the lead role of Al Simmons, AKA Spawn. Here he is with Todd McFarlane when it was first announced. And the fans were like, yeah! Jamie Foxx is a fantastic actor. He's good at action and comedy and drama. He won the best actor Oscar for playing Ray Charles. So it's a very popular pick. My personal pick would have been Derek Luke who played Booby Miles on Friday Night Lights. So I can understand you wanna go with a bigger name like Jamie Foxx, that's great. I still think his wife Wanda should be played by Gugu and Bafta Raw. She's starting Loki by the way. But that role has not been cast so far, so back to the subject. So we have a studio to release it, we have a script, and we have a lead star. So where is the Spawn movie now? So in 2019, Team, Todd McFarlane announces that he's having struggles with executives who are trying to make this movie PG-13, but he insists on making it rated R, which makes sense. It's horror action. Spawn is an R-rated story. Have you not seen the animated series on HBO? It's a hard R. In the Deadpool movies, Logan, and the Joker movie all did extremely well and they are also hard art. So Todd's not wrong on that one. He's absolutely right for fighting for that. But Todd is having problems with the financing of the movie and he does something very insane. And he actually goes public and says that he's thinking about going to Kickstarter to try to raise the first $20 million of this project, which is a horrible idea because you're making everyday common people producers of the movie basically. They're not consumers anymore, they're investors and that opens up a whole legal can of worms. At the very least, the end credit of the movie would have to be 30 minutes long, so you had to show all the names who invested in the Kickstarter. So no, it was never a reasonable idea in the first place, so I don't even know why he said something so stupid. So Todd does win a victory in development, and the studio agrees to make it rated R due to the success of the Joker making a billion dollars on a very tiny budget. Todd did offer a concession with a rewrite of his script being done by a professional screenwriter named Brian Tucker. Brian wrote Broken City, and he's doing the reboot of The Fugitive. But here we are in 2022, and this this movie still has not really moved that far in terms of pre-production. And why not? 
money. Just because Bloomhouse agreed to be the studio to be the distributor of this movie does not mean that Bloomhouse is going to put up all the money to finance the movie. Bloomhouse is notoriously tight with their pocketbook and they found a way to make big box office on very small budgets. The movie that put them on the map in the United States was Paranormal Activity and it went on to make $193 million at the box office at just a $215,000 budget. And then there's The Purge that made $89 million on just $3 million in its initial budget. And their biggest hit so far, Get Out, which made $255 million on just a $4.5 million budget, and it won them an Oscar for Best Original Screenplay. And how did they do it? Well, first of all, very little special effects, mostly practical effects. They don't have too many big name stars. For example, Ethan Hawke was leading the Purge series, and he's a career number two guy. He's never really been a lead. Daniel Kaluuya is an Oscar winner now for his role in Judas and the Black Messiah, but he was a nobody at the time when he was starting in Get Out. So Bloomhouse has never been paying out big money in terms of talent, and their biggest secret overall for keeping their price down shooting on one location if you look at the purge and get out almost all of it is shot at one place about 90 percent of it is shot at that one house it keeps your prices low and saves you money so let's be clear when bloomhouse got in the business of being with todd mcfarland to make spawn i'm 100 percent sure that it was not todd mcfarland's first choice but i'm sure all the big hitters and their subsidiaries such as disney warner brothers sony universal all said there's no way in hell we're going to give you 150 million dollars and let you direct this movie too and todd had been running around since 2015 telling people that this movie is gonna get made and he's got nowhere to go so Bloomhouse is like well I guess we'll take it and Bloomhouse is a studio that makes horror movies so it sounds like it's a perfect fit however based on what I showed you previously Bloomhouse does not spend a lot of money in making movies they just don't the most money they ever spent on one single movie was a purge sequel which they spent 18 million dollars on and it makes 77 million dollars and let's be clear you're not going to make spawn for 18 million dollars you're not even going to be able to do spawn on a joker budget which was about 70 million dollars the joker is more like a real world anarchy story so it didn't require a lot of cgi but spawn the CGI is gonna be like more cowbell you gotta have more cowbell you can't have enough so I think that Bloomhouse agreed and said yeah we'll take it but they did not agree to finance it for this amount of money I think they probably agreed to throw 20 million dollars at it and said hey Todd come up with the rest up on your own and we'll distribute it Todd didn't have anywhere else to take it because no one wants to deal with him unless he gives up this whole dream of directing it which he's not gonna do so that's why we're here Todd McFarlane trying to direct his own spawn movie to me is sort of like a owner of a football team going onto the field and trying to play quarterback himself. Dude, seriously, leave it to the pros. I mean, come on, Todd. You're going to, have to give up some more concessions for this movie to happen. You're 61 years old at the time I made this video. You're not getting any younger. People want to see the film. As a matter of fact, they want to see a whole trilogy. I mean, seriously, Spawn has got 326 issues in the can. You could make 10 movies. Another problem you have is that Jamie Foxx is also running out of time. At the time I made this video, he's 54 years old. Yeah, his character is going to be mostly CGI and he's going to be covered up in prosthetics. But you have to show Lieutenant Colonel Al Sim out doing blackout missions you know Rambo style flexing muscles and stuff and if this film doesn't get off the ground into 2025 and Jamie Foxx is like 58 years old that's just not gonna look right he will have aged out of the role at that point and you'll have to recast it okay folks thank you for hanging in there with me so I know it's been a long video and hopefully I gave you enough evidence to show you that I don't think this movie is ever actually going to get made there's just too many pitfalls here and Todd McFarlane is his own worst enemy if you think I'm right please go to the comment section and salute me if you think I'm wrong please let me know your rationale for why you think it will get made with all this evidence showing that it won't. And for the record, I do think that Todd McFarlane is one of the greatest creators in the history of comics. I'm more than a fan of his work with Amazing Spider-Man. I'm more than a fan of his work with Spawn. Absolutely love the character. The toys that he makes are some of the best in the industry. His reputation in dealing with the fans has been excellent in terms of a person at his level. He did make some mistakes earlier in his life that we documented in terms of business that he probably knows better now. But for the love of God, Todd, you gotta let this go about the directing thing on Spawn and just give it to a professional so you can get it financed so this thing can get made so we all will be happy. Thank you very much. You know the drill. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, give it a thumbs up, and share these videos on social media so others learn about the Comic Power channel. While you're here, be sure to see some of my other videos about black superheroes. On the left is a celebration of Luke Cage who turns 50 years old in 2022. He has the distinction of being the first black superhero to headline his own title. And on the right is a video about Monica Rambeau. She made her adult first appearance in WandaVision. Learn more about her superhero origin in the pages of Marvel Comics and how she was the first female to go by the name Captain Marvel. Peace out.